Hello everyone. So today we'll see a new topic and so very scoring and easy chapter that is simultaneous linear equations. So today in this entire video, I'll show you the different methods and approaches using which we can get all the type of sums from this chapter to understand and to apply the same in our problems. So you are watching the mathematics. I'm Michael Dutta of Harsawan Hogason. Okay, so let's begin. Now, simultaneous linear equation is very clear from the name that it's basically we are talking about a pair of linear equations. Okay, so like if I write the general form of these two equations, that will look something like this. It will be a1x plus b1y plus c1 equal to 0. So basically a1 is the coefficient of x, b1 is the coefficient of y, and c1 is the constant term, right? And since we are talking about a pair of linear equations, obviously we'll have one more equation of the same type. So let's name it as a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to zero. So a2 is the coefficient of x, b2 is the coefficient of y, and c2 is the constant term in the second equation. So if these are the two linear equations that we are talking about, then if, if we want the solution of this pair, okay, or the simultaneous linear equations, now there are three methods to solve them, okay? And all the three methods we have to know because in this chapter, the questions that you all get, they mention the method as well. So you all need to know all the three methods, okay? So if we start from the first one, the name of the first method is the substitution method, or we also call it as elimination by substitution. The second one is called the elimination method where we eliminate using equating the coefficients and the third method is called the cross multiplication method okay so these are the three methods that we learn today one by one so i'm going to explain you all all the three methods with problems of each type okay so let's first begin with the first approach that is the substitution method okay now in substitution method let us take one question and from that question only we are going to learn how to apply and to solve by this method okay so let's take a pair say for example we have 3x minus y is equal to 23. And the other one is x by 3 plus y by 4 is equal to 4. So these are the two equations given to us. Now, in the beginning, I showed you all the general form. So always try to bring the equation in the general form. That will be easier for all of you. And see to it that if you avoid fraction, that will be easier for all of you. Now the first one, it's fine. Now the second one, we can simplify a little bit. We can do the LCM here. So we'll make, the, make it 12. So it'll become 4x plus 3y. And that side, we'll have a 4. And which can be further written as 4x plus 3y is equal to 48. Okay. So this is equation number 1. And this is equation number 2. Now the next thing is in this method, what we do is, out of these two equations, you first choose the which variable you all want to target. Okay, any variable you all can first start with. So basically, just find the value of any one of the variable from any one of the two equations, whichever you all want. Okay, now, but according to the situation, it will be easier if we find from the first one because y we can clearly get here. So there is no such rule that you have to do x only first or y only first, any one variable. So whichever will be easier according to the situation, always choose according to that and be a little bit clever. In that case, it will be easier for you. So from equation number one, if I make y as the subject or if I find the value of the variable y, then it will become 3x minus 23, correct? And this now I'll mark it as equation number three. 
Now this value of y, since I've got this value from equation number one, now you substitute in the other equation, that is equation number two. So always remember from whichever equation you're finding the value of the variable, you have to substitute in the other equation. Now, since I have uh, got this value from the first one, so I'm going to substitute in equation two. So I'll write substituting in equation two. So that means in equation two in place of y, you'll just write 3x minus 23. So now let's see it. So you'll write it at 4x plus 3 into, now in place of y, I'm substituting this value as 3x minus 23, and that is equal to 48, okay? Now let's solve it. So it'll be 4x plus 9x minus, this will become 69, and that is equal to 48, okay? Now the way we solve, a linear equation in one variable, we are going to do it in this way. So 9 plus 4 is 13x and 69 will go to the other side, it will become 48 plus 69 and that will be 117. So x will be 117 divided by 13 and that will be, just quickly calculate that what is 117 divided by 13. Okay, so it should be 9. So that means the value of x is Nine. Now this value of x that you all have got, now substitute this value in equation number three. So you can write it here after this, that substituting x in three. So what we'll get, we'll get y is equal to three into nine minus 23. So we'll be getting 27 minus 23, which will become four. Okay, so we got both the values of x and y. So we'll finally conclude, therefore, the solution is x is equal to 9 and y is equal to 4. So that is how we apply this method and that is how it works. Okay, understood? Now, whichever question you all get, you all have to do it in the same way if you all are solving by substitution method. Okay, next We'll go to the next one, that is the elimination method. Now this approach is a little bit different from the first one. So let me show you all one sum and accordingly we are going to discuss it. Okay, Achha, now let us take one random pair of linear equations and let's see what we get. Like suppose we have 2x minus 3y is equal to 7 and 5x plus y is equal to 9. Now the technique here is you all have to make the coefficients same for any one of the variables. Okay, if you can do that, your job will be done after that in only few more steps. So target any one of the variable whose coefficients you all can make same in both the equations. Depends according to the situation. Like if you see in this question, then in the first equation, the coefficient of y is three and in the second one is one. So it's easier for me to make the coefficients of uh, y same here if I just multiplied the second equation with three. And in case you have something like if both the variables have like any one of the variables have two different coefficients like here x have two and in the second one x have five as the coefficient so if you want to in that case we want to make the coefficient same then you think about the lcm so lcm of two and five is 10 so that means the first equation you have to multiply with five and the second one with two but here since it's working uh, with y will be more easier so we are going to proceed with y so i'm just multiplying the second equation i'm modifying it with three so this will become 15 x plus 3y is equal to 27. I'm marking it as equation number two. And the first one, which is already there, I'm marking it as equation number one. Now, since my coefficients are same here, my target is to eliminate any one of the variables. So what I will do here, now we have minus 3y in the first one and we have plus 3y in the second one. So if I want to eliminate, so I'll basically just add them. Okay, so one plus two, I'll do. So in that case, I'll be getting 2x plus 15x, that'll become 17x minus 3y plus 3y will cancel out. And on the right side, 27 plus 7 will become 34. 
and easily now we are getting x is equal to 2 okay and now let's substitute this in the any any one of the equations either one or two whichever you all want so substituting x in one so two into two it will become minus three y is equal to seven so that means three y will become four minus seven which means three y is equal to minus three and therefore y will be minus one so finally you can conclude that therefore the solution is x is equal to 2 and y is equal to minus 1. Okay, so that is how we all are going to do it. Okay, similarly, and in any case, suppose after making the question same, if you all see that both are positive terms or both are negative terms. So in that case, if you want to eliminate, then you have to subtract. So depending on the situation, you decide that whether you have to subtract or whether you have to add the two equations to eliminate any one of the variables, right? So this is what elimination method is all about, okay? Now next, we'll go to the cross multiplication method. Now cross multiplication is a very important approach, okay? And generally, one question comes from this particular method. They mentioned the method that you solve by cross multiplication, okay? And let's see one of these question and using this method, we are going to solve it. Okay, now let's see. So when we have started, so we have already seen the general form. Okay, so it's A1X plus B1Y plus C1 is equal to zero and A2X plus B2Y plus C2 equal to zero. Now remember, if you want to solve by cross multiplication method, the first thing that you all need to do is bring everything to one side of the equation. Okay, bring everything to the one side. So basically just totally convert in the general form. After converting, the first thing that you all need to do is get the values of the six numbers. What are these? A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. Okay, now let me show you all with one particular sum. Achha, before that, one more thing, now to solve it, there's a particular format, there's a particular formula, whatever you call it. So how we are getting it and how to remember it, both the things I'm going to tell you all. So the formula is, it's X divided by B1 C2 minus B2 C1, that is equal to Y divided by C1 A2 minus C2 A1, and that is equal to one divided by A1 B2 minus A2 B1. Okay, this is the formula. Now, if you want to remember it, then I can tell you all one technique. So basically, see here, I'm just writing the coefficients and the constant numbers here. So A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. Okay. Now, when we are writing the denominator for the first fraction, that is X divided by. So when we are writing the, uh, the denominator for X, what is the coefficient of X here in, two, in these two equations? A1, A2. So if you're writing the denominator of X, then just exclude the coefficient of X. So that means A1, A2 is already crossed out, it's gone. So what we are left with, B1, B2, C1, C2. Now let's do a cross here. So we are getting the denominator in this way. So we will do a cross. So B1, C2 minus B2, C1. So that is how we got this. Okay, now similarly, if you want to get the denominator for Y, so you just exclude the coefficients of y, that is b1, b2, I'm going to exclude, okay? And so we are left with c1, c2 and a1, a2, but a1, a2 you write later after c1, c2, because this actually works like a cycle. So a, b, c, a, b, c, like that it comes. After c, again, you have to get back to a, like a cycle, right? So we are left with only the C1, C2 and A1, A2. So we'll again do a cross. So it's C1, A2 minus C2, A1. And that is how we are getting this denominator. Okay. Next for the one, the denominator for one. So this is a constant term. So you just exclude the constant term. So that means you are going to exclude C1, C2. So what we are now left with A1, A2, B1, B2, as I told, it moves in a cycle. So in the next cycle, it will again after it will again come the B, uh, the coefficients in terms of B will come after that. So again, if you do a cross, it will be A1, B2 minus A2, B1. And that is how we got this denominator. So you, if you can remember in this way, okay, in using this trick as a cross, you can remember. Now let's see one sum, okay. 
So let me take it as the two equations as suppose 4x plus 3y is equal to 17. Suppose this is the first equation. And the second one is 3x minus 4y plus 6 equal to 0. So as I told you all, that always see that everything is on one side. So basically in the general form. So for the second equation, everything is already on the one side. But for the first one, it's not. So I'll bring everything to one side first. So it'll be 4x plus 3y minus 17 is equal to 0. So this is my first equation and this is my second equation. Okay, so just compare with the general form and get the values of A1, B1, C1 and A2, B2, C2. So let's write the values. So from the first equation, so A1 will be 4, B1 will be 3 and C1 will be minus 17. Be very careful regarding the sign. A1 is coefficient of x, B1 is coefficient of y and minus 17 that is C1 is the constant term in the first equation. Similarly, the same thing in equation number two. So A2 will be three, B2 will be minus four and C2 will be six. Okay, we got the six values. Now we'll apply the formula. So it'll be X divided by, so B1, C2. So that means three into six minus B2, C1. So it'll be minus four into minus 17. Be very careful with the signs. That is equal to y divided by C1, A2. So that means minus 17 into 3 minus C2, A1. So it will be 6 into 4. That will be equal to 1 divided by A1, B2. So that means 4 into minus 4 minus A2, B1. So it will be 3 into 3. So now let's simplify. Let's evaluate. So 3 into 6 will be 18. And here... It will become minus and 17 into 4. So that will be 68. Okay. And that will be equal to y divided by 17 into 3. Minus 17 into 3. That will become minus 51. And we have minus 6, 4 times 24. And that is equal to 1 divided by minus 16. And this will be minus 9. So ultimately what we are getting? We are getting x divided by. This will become minus 50. That is equal to y divided by minus 75. And that is equal to z divided by minus 25. Right. Now to get the value of x, you just equate the fraction with x to the fraction with 1. Uh, okay. So this is not z. Sorry, I've mistakenly written it as z. It will be 1. Right. It was 1. Yeah. So just equate the fraction with x and the fraction with the constant. So it will become, so therefore x by minus 50 is equal to 1 divided by minus 25. So now if we cross multiply, so x will become 2, right? And similarly, if you want to find y, then just equate the fraction of y with the constant. So y divided by minus 75 will be equal to 1 by minus 25. And if we cross multiply, so y will become 3. So that is the final solution. And finally, you all can conclude that therefore the solution is x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. So that is how cross multiplication method works. So using these three methods, you all can solve all the type of questions from this particular chapter. Okay. I hope you all have understood all the three methods Okay, those who are new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon to get all the notifications for the new videos that I'll keep bringing. Okay.